Welcome to the third clip on the subject of cumulative frequency diagrams. Uh, in the first two clips, we first of all learnt how to make a cumulative frequency diagram from an ordinary frequency diagram by finding the cumulative frequencies and plotting them as a graph. And in the second video, we looked at how to estimate the median and the quartiles of the data. This time we're going to look at how we draw a box plot. Now a box plot just has five pieces of data in it. It has the median and the quartiles, but it also has the smallest value and the largest value in the range of the data. So let's just draw a box plot of this data. The box represents the quartiles and the median. The quartiles are at either end of the box, lower quartile at the lower end, upper quartile at the upper end, and the median is a line in the middle of the box. The width of the box is the interquartile range, in this case 1.72. But to get the lowest value and the highest value, we have to take uh, have to make an estimate because we know that between uh, let's go back to the distribution values between naught and one there are ten values, but we don't know what the smallest is. We have to assume that it's naught. And at the top end, we know that between seven and eight there are ten values. We have to assume that the largest value is well very nearly 8 at least. So the top and the bottom values are going to be 0 and 8 unless we have evidence or information which tells us that they're slightly different from that. We have to assume that they're at the sort of extremes. So there's our box plot, five pieces of data. Smallest value, lower quartile, median, upper quartile and highest value. And this box plot, or sometimes called a, a box and whisker diagram, is very useful, um, especially when you've got several of them and you're comparing two different or more uh, data sets. Let's look at some more distributions and what their box plots look like. Well, here's another one with a much wider box. Here's another one where uh, every all the four distances, here, 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 and here, are approximately the same. Once again, this has the, bo the box and the median bunched up towards uh, the left-hand end. This has the same thing, but bunched towards the right-hand end of the data. Similar, similar. And so different distributions are going to have different box plots. It's important to realize that in a box plot, the four different regions of the box plot, in other words, the two arms, and the two halves of the box, or the two parts of the box, all have the same amount of data. They're all, they each hold a quarter of the total data. So a quarter of the total data in this distribution is between 0 and 3.53. Another quarter between 3.53 and 4.44. Another quarter between 4.44 and 5.25. And another quarter between 5.25 and 8. The box plot always splits the data into four quarters of the data. So when you've got a distribution like this, this is a quarter of the data, this is a quarter of the data, this is a quarter of the data, and so is this. Obviously in this last interval the quarter of the data is very spread out, but here it's quite tightly packed. And that's always true. The box plot may change its appearance and shape, but it's always one quarter, one quarter, one quarter, one quarter of the data. And it's that feature which makes it quite good for comparing uh, two different data sets by looking at their box plots.